Now to more breaking news. The LAPD is in pursuit of a shooting suspect. Mm, Gil Levis overhead in Sky 5. Gil. It's LAPD uh, Southeast Division that went into pursuit of this vehicle shooting suspect. Like you said, it was westbound on the 105 freeway, crossed over the 405 freeway, went all the way to the very end on Imperial Highway, and then reverse course. Here we go, eastbound on the 105 freeway, approaching the 405, desperate to get away, moving in and out of lanes. He got the airship from the uh, LAPD overhead with its nights and lights and multiple units in trail of this vehicle. Now he's going to get into some heavy traffic here as he gets up to the 405 freeway freeway right now, but here he is using that uh, fast lane, the carpool lane there to get around all the vehicles. But yeah, very shortly, he's going to have a big traffic jam as he crosses over the 405. As you see there, he's going to use that center divider to pass, but it has uh, been very dangerous uh, driving high speeds and very reckless. But uh, again, a shooting suspect uh, LAPD is in pursuit of right now, and he's going to be going into uh, towards the 110 freeway from where this started. This Matt. is a desperate driver. Yeah, it certainly looks like, uh, Micah, that, that even though he's in the uh, in, in the fast lane there, in the carpool lane, it's now coming to an end. He's going to have to try and squeeze in his way in there and probably going to t get off the freeway, don't you think? Well, like you, you never know. Trying to predict what a uh, pursuit suspect is going to do is uh, oftentimes a fool's errand, and law enforcement will be the first to tell you that. Uh, the, a desperate suspect at, for sure uh, and willing to take risks uh, clearly uh, with the driving behavior here. Again, a shooting suspect. LAPD behind this. Uh, obviously, CHP uh, is aware of this. There's the LAPD airship overhead. And the question at this point, Exiting. well, if he's getting off the freeway, LAPD remains uh, the lead agency, Gil. Uh, uh, unless and until this, uh, you know, goes on for some time on the freeway, at which point you might see CHP. Uh, is this a transition road, Gil? Yeah, it looks like he's exiting here onto, uh, I believe that's going to be Prairie, uh, and using that off ramp here. Now he, he's in that uh, left turn lane or the left lane there, and will likely, well, we'll see if he goes north on Prairie or not. He's weaving his way in and out of traffic. Whoa, I don't know if he hit that car. He's got cross traffic. Nope, he's going to come southbound back across the freeway and will be going into Hawthorne now. So you see this, look at this wrong side of the road. Uh, right down the center of the street there. He's going to come into a turn here that I believe is going to be Imperial Highway. Now eastbound Imperial Highway, very dangerous out here. A uh, lot of traffic on the roads and on the freeway itself. Yes, yeah, so, uh, but it looks like this was his best bet. Uh, you know, either be stuck on the 405. I mean, no matter what, everybody knows at this hour on a Friday, the 405 is going to be jam-packed in both directions. And so he did make that exit. He is now here on surface streets on Imperial Highway, as you can see there, splitting lanes at this moment. And there is night sun above him. We've got the LAPD with the night sun above him. So uh, what, what happened to those units behind him that were on the freeway on the 105 as he was trying to get onto the 405? Uh, Gil has that kind of vantage point that we can look at. Do we have any units behind him still while he's making uh, his way through Imperial Highway and in Englewood? Yeah, let me come out a little wider. That unit's there catching up. Uh, wrong side of the road, eastbound, eastbound on the westbound lanes there, but you got at least one unit. Look at that. Oh, man. There's cars diving out of the way again here. This is the second pursuit so far this, uh, today in the last hour, and we've seen the same type of driving here. Wrong side of the road. That unit staying right in there. It's a 77th Division officer that's been in pursuit the whole time. They have the airship overhead keeping an eye on it as well, but uh, they're trying to give multiple units or more units on scene to uh, try to bring this to an end, but a very desperate situation as this suspected uh, person wanted for a shooting uh, is on the run from the officers. Very dangerous and on surface streets obviously all the more dangerous with cross traffic and the potential for pedestrians. I must say uh, not often we see law enforcement also trailing a suspect on the wrong side of the road. Mm. Uh, very unusual, very aggressive tactic by LAPD. Typically they will not do that. Um, obviously you had a situation with a lot of traffic on the one side uh, that they're moving in. Uh, so really the only way to stay behind him would have been to stay uh, with him on the opposite side of the road. But again, not something you often see. Uh, this suspect desperate oh, no. to get away, wow. desperate to get away in a very wow. dangerous situation. Uh, again, on surface streets with driving like this, uh, and, and, and quite a challenge for law enforcement uh, just to stay behind the suspect, Gil. 
Oh, absolutely. So many close calls there, Mike. Uh, he split the lanes with that pickup truck. I thought they were going to hit there. You got the unit there right behind the driver. And the, uh, the situation here, because he's wanted for a shooting, they uh, are take, taking all precautions with this driver. Uh, we don't know if he's uh, armed at this point or not. So they're going to be uh, right on his tail the entire time. The airship overhead lighting up the intersection. Here he goes, a left-hand turn northbound. Uh, away from us here. This is going to be on Western. Now, uh, that's going to be problematic for us because he's going into the LAX airspace. So we're going to have to hold where we're at here and continue to, to follow it. But uh, look at the driving here right through that intersection. Green light, that was good. But uh, we fear that he's going to go through uh, red lights up ahead and a lot of traffic on Western. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, again, this is happening at, at, at the prime time of traffic in Los Angeles, no matter what city you are in, what neighborhood you are in. Um, and uh, I was very surprised to, say, to see the cops that are behind him, the black and whites that are behind him, uh, kind of maneuver through all of that traffic that they had at that stoplight earlier, just like they're doing right now, uh, trying to keep in touch with, trying to keep up with them. Do we know anything about the car? Is the car stolen? Is that why they're also being so aggressive with this particular uh, pursuit? Now, you know, we haven't heard, uh, Cher, that it's a stolen vehicle or not. He's making a left-hand turn here. That's going to be westbound on uh, Century Boulevard. So heading back towards the freeway. But no word yet on if that's a stolen vehicle or not. But that unit is uh, right behind him. You saw the, the difficulty for those uh, law enforcement officers to try to navigate the traffic uh, during this chase. Very difficult situation. But look at the speeds here. 75 miles an hour on Century going towards LAX. Again, a difficult shot. We have to keep our distance. There are airspace issues with the approach to LAX. Doing our best in Sky 5 to stay with this pursuit. A shooting suspect wanted by the LAPD. And as you can see, if you've been watching this for any length of time, a very dangerous situation, a very desperate suspect, uh, willing uh, to risk the whole lot, everything, to get away. And driving like this, 75, 80 miles an hour on surface streets, uh, just uh, as the sun is going down, uh, the most most difficult time to see. Uh, visibility is very difficult. It's often difficult to see pedestrians, other cars, uh, particularly people on motorcycles. And look what this person uh. is doing, uh, just trying to force his way through this traffic here along uh, the uh, along the surface streets here uh, moving westbound uh, we believe again this is century boulevard moving westbound uh, toward the 405 uh, and, and look at all that traffic on surface streets as to be expected uh, and, and and lapd swarming the area they're tracking this of course from the air uh, but on the ground as well trying to stay with the suspect a very very dangerous situation some gill Oh my gosh, look at this traffic. Yeah, you're, there's no doubt about that, Cher. Right through that uh, busy shopping center, uh, the pursuit went and it got back onto Century here eastbound, but forcing, just absolutely forcing his way through the traffic here. Uh, you know, these poor people in traffic, it's bad enough they're in the traffic, but now they have some uh, car driving like a bull coming behind them, trying to get them out of their way. Uh, and uh, But right now he's got nowhere to go. He's locked in there. They got the units right behind him the airship overhead, and they're going to try to set up a spike strip uh, at this intersection to try to get those tires pu punctured, but at this point, we'll see if they are able to do that. A very dangerous situation for those officers. They got, look at this, the trunk again on this pursuit ah. is popped again, so that, that limits the officer's ability to look into that back window. Here he goes, he's going northbound on 11th Avenue, and again, into a very busy shopping center area here. He's going to make that left-hand turn, uh, the trunk closed there, so that's good. And this right next to the L Super, and uh, we'll come out to a wider shot. We'll see which way uh, in the uh, parking lot he'll go at this point. But uh, look at that, right through. And yeah. trying to make his way back onto uh, the surface streets. Yeah, uh, and you wonder if there's a foot bail uh, in the offing here uh, into the congested area. Uh, usually we'll see them uh, amongst high rises or parking garages, oftentimes. Uh, uh, not so often in, in uh, strip malls, but uh, trying to get away from the congestion, obviously, uh, and the driver clearly stopping at nothing uh, t to make a move here t to break this uh, uh, or, or perhaps switching. There you go. There he comes he out the other side. Uh, what is it with this parking lot and this strip mall that this driver so interested in? Boy, twice now, and uh, all those people that are there, very dangerous situation. Going back towards the officers, we can't see it, but 
they're trying to uh, get more units here so that in case the jumps out, he will uh, be caught. But uh, unfortunately, right now we can't see him. And I'm trying to listen to what they're saying. Uh, it looks like looks like they're trying to get catch up to him there. Lost eyes on him, but uh, might be back out on sentry. Yeah, we can see the um, the black and back white out. circling around there. At least four of the cars right there. Uh, the fifth, the sixth one now. Uh, this is just incredible. Uh, and into a parking lot here. And a question of where this is going to go. Uh, yeah, th th this could be a trap here, a sort of dead end situation. Uh, LAPD on him. And, and by the way, doing a remarkable job to stay on the rear bumper of the suspect uh, and all that uh, this driver's been doing over the last 15, 20 minutes. And I'm sure that, you know, they're just waiting for him to get to that, that, that sweet spot of like a little bit over 35 miles per hour for him, for the, uh, for them to be, perform a pit maneuver and, and put this to an end. But, you know, at this point, there's, he's, oh. this suspect has put so many people in danger already. Um, and obviously, you know, we have to consider him armed and dangerous because this is a shooting suspect that is doing anything that he can or she uh, to get away. Um, and uh, that includes, get, you know, muscling through and getting through, uh, uh, you know, traffic jams. And I'm surprised, you know, with all the near misses, there hasn't been much damage to his car uh, at all. Right. I mean, it's been very close multiple times. Look at the speeds here, over 70 miles an hour, losing behind the homes here. But we're going to try to catch back up with him. Eastbound on uh, Century, blacked out still. You got the unit behind there. But boy, what a dangerous situation. Okay, turn this headlights back mm -hmm. on. And that probably indicates that he's got some traffic up ahead. He's going on the wrong side of the road again. And there's the intersection. Western blows right through it. Pedestrians crossing there, boy. Glad he went straight and not turned left. And then he's gonna continue towards the 110 freeway now. So we'll see what happens uh, with this driver, if he continues to stay on sentry or not. But wow, what a dangerous situation here. Oh, look at that, oh, right through that wow. intersection. Oh my goodness. Now that was, uh, it, well, you don't know it. If it was a green light, obviously the guy was turning left there, uh, which would make it cross traffic. So there was an arrow there potentially. That one was very close. This is just incredible to watch this driver moving at these high speeds uh, in a situation like this. Uh, it is it is virtually impossible to continue this uh, for any length of time without hitting something. Uh, you know, it's just this is remarkable to see to this point uh, and the LAPD being so aggressive on the surface streets uh, at this hour of night on a Friday with so much traffic, uh, pedestrians and uh, LAPD now beginning to slow uh, and, and uh, create some distance between the suspect uh, and that lead officer's car there. And, and you wonder, are they going into tracking, watching uh, their behavior and frankly, the behavior of the driver? It, it's just at some point it's it becomes too much and just too much risk mm -hmm. for so many people in this neighborhood. Yeah, even the cops were, uh, you know, following him as he would, you know, at, muscle his way through or try to get through these other cars that were, uh, you know, at, just minding their own business at a, at a normal Friday night traffic light and, um, you know, with the congestion there. And then the cops were following him through that, um, you know, when he would try and make his way through uh, the other side and, and mm. then into a parking lot, we saw um, the aggressive tactics of the LAPD. And this is still going on um, and, and has been going on for some time now. Uh, this this guy's going to do anything he can to get away. Shot here, uh, so you have the driver, we believe the driver in custody, uh, and one outstanding suspect, a passenger in this car, LAPD pursuing a, a suspect wanted in a shooting, So they, they, and they believe he was armed with a handgun. Uh, and again, this second person uh, potentially wearing camouflage in this neighborhood. Uh, if you live in this neighborhood, uh, close and lock your doors and windows uh, as LAPD uh, moves in. There is at this point, uh, as far as we know, one suspect on the run in this neighborhood. Uh, that's where uh, the vehicle came to a rest there in that intersection there uh, where the driver, we believe, was taken into custody. Uh, and again, LAPD now moving their efforts and their focus to this adjacent neighborhood here. Uh, scanner traffic indicating the suspect may have been on the roof of one of these homes or buildings. 
difficult to say, obviously difficult to see, uh, but law enforcement uh, cordoning the area, setting up a perimeter uh, and searching at this point for one outstanding shooting suspect in what was a wild and very dangerous pursuit on surface streets in Los Angeles here for the past 30 minutes or so. Gil, do you have any more new uh, any uh, new information for us about the second suspect in the camouflage? I do. They're still searching for him. It sounds like he tossed the gun during that foot chase. There's the uh, where the pursuit came to an end. The second person ran across into a motel onto the roof that got, somehow got off that roof and ran down the street on, uh, towards 11th Avenue and then turned down the, uh, an alleyway. Now they're looking for that suspect still in that alleyway, but the airship is directly overhead. They're able, they have eyes on where that uh, person was last seen, but uh, the airship saying that he uh, disposed of a weapon somewhere in that alleyway right now. So that's uh, the uh, extent of it right now. It's, it's one whole block uh, east of Crenshaw right now is where they're searching in an alleyway. Yeah, just at, as dinner time is approaching and a lot of people probably uh, just making their way home or at home already. And uh, as Micah mentioned, yes, you've got to close those doors, lock them, your windows as well, because there is still one suspect that is outstanding. They are dressed in camouflage. Stay indoors, uh, stay safe at this moment. And uh, as the police try and do their job, um, you know, they, they're setting up the perimeter here to try and um, you know, hone in on this second suspect that has already tossed a handgun. Uh, but we don't know what this suspect uh, is capable of. They were capable of running for over a half an hour from dozen, uh, nearly half a dozen police um, cruisers in the Inglewood area. And uh, you just never know what could happen here. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. And uh, just to keep everything and everyone um, uh, locked behind closed doors, you know, this is it just gives you so much anxiety to think that there's somebody on the run in your neighborhood, let alone in camouflage, that is po possibly responsible for for a shooting. Yeah, a shooting suspect. So there were two individuals in this car. The driver is in custody. The passenger, LAPD, searching for that suspect in this neighborhood just east of Crenshaw. Uh, we'll continue to track the developments uh, as the LAPD reports when this suspect is in custody. We will bring that information to you.